Introducing the Monkees, a 1966 TV series that's a roller coaster of humor, shock, and heartache. The show, with its unique blend of comedy and music, has left an impact on fans worldwide. As you reminisce about the various roles played by the cast, we're curious, which character stole the spotlight for you? Stay tuned for some funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the series. It's a journey worth taking, and we bet you won't want to miss a beat. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience connected to the monkeys? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more surprises, and remember to hit us up with your favorite role. Your input makes this trip down memory lane all the more exciting. So, who's your standout monkey? Share your thoughts and join the conversation. The Monkees is a classic television series that premiered in 1966, swiftly becoming a cultural phenomenon. Created by Bob Rafelson and Burt Schneider, the show revolves around the misadventures of a fictional rock band featuring the comedic escapades of its members. Set against the backdrop of the swinging 1960s, it follows four young men striving for musical stardom while navigating the humorous challenges of their daily lives. The main characters, Mike Nesmith, Peter Tork, Davy Jones, and Mickey Dolenz, portray exaggerated versions of themselves as they encounter various zany situations. The plot unfolds as the band pursues their dreams, often finding themselves entangled in comedic scenarios, blending slapstick humor with a vibrant musical soundtrack. Each episode incorporates catchy pop rock tunes, adding a unique musical element to the show. The series ingeniously combined scripted episodes with innovative music videos, contributing to its groundbreaking style. The Monkees received critical acclaim for its innovative approach, earning two Emmy Awards in 1967. The show's success extended beyond television, as the accompanying musical albums also achieved significant popularity. Notably, the debut album surpassed even the Beatles' records in sales during certain periods, Despite facing skepticism for their manufactured image as a prefab four, they managed to transcend these expectations, leaving an indelible mark on pop culture. The series ran for two seasons, concluding in 1968, but its impact endured, solidifying their place as a pioneering force in the realms of television and music. The 1950s marked a pivotal period in American history, characterized by post-World War II economic prosperity and the emergence of a distinctive cultural identity. Shaped by Cold War tensions and the burgeoning civil rights movement, this era witnessed a shift in societal norms and values. The prevalence of suburban living, the rise of television as a dominant medium, and the advent of rock and roll music all contributed to a dynamic cultural landscape. Against this backdrop, the 1966 TV series The Monkees found its roots. The show reflected the countercultural spirit of the 1960s, challenging traditional norms through its whimsical portrayal of a fictional rock band's escapades. They, comprised of Davy Jones, Mickey Dolenz, Michael Nesmith, and Peter Tork, embodied the rebellious energy and free-spirited ethos associated with the era. The series leveraged the burgeoning popularity of rock music, incorporating it into the fabric of the show. Their zany antics and musical performances mirrored the rebellious and experimental nature of the 1960s youth culture. The creators cleverly blended comedy with a musical narrative, capturing the essence of the changing times and the youth's desire for self-expression. Moreover, their dynamic mirrored the anti-establishment sentiments of the era. As the youth questioned societal norms and authority, the show's themes resonated with the growing desire for independence and nonconformity. Their misadventures and irreverent humor became a cultural touchstone, aligning with the countercultural sentiments that defined the 1960s. In summary, the Monkees emerged during a transformative period in American history, encapsulating the cultural and social shifts of the 1960s. The show's themes and content were deeply influenced by the era's rebellious spirit, reflected in its fusion of music, comedy, and a playful challenge to traditional norms. Among those who auditioned for the group were Paul Williams and Stephen Stills. Stills, showing promise but deemed too old, lost interest when he learned Screen Gems would demand publishing rights to his songs. He recommended his former roommate, Peter Tork, who secured the spot. Initially, Michael Nesmith earned the nickname Wool Hat for the TV series due to wearing one during auditions. Although credited as such in early publicity, Nesmith disliked the moniker, which was eventually dropped. 
The TV series producers initially considered the Dave Clark Five and the Love and Spoonful, but eventually opted for four unknowns. This decision laid the foundation for the group's rise to fame. Auditions for the group witnessed notable figures like Paul Williams and Stephen Stills. Stills, though promising, withdrew due to Screen Gems' demands on song publishing rights. His recommendation, Peter Tork, secured the spot. Michael Nesmith, initially dubbed Wool Hat for wearing one during auditions, disliked the moniker, later dropped. Producers considered the Dave Clark Five and the Lovin' Spoonful, but chose four unknowns, laying the foundation for the group's rise. Notably, Harry Nilsson and Danny Hutton, auditionees, faced rejection. Nilsson later penned Cuddly Toy, covered by the group. Hutton, later part of Three Dog Night, also faced rejection. Midway through the TV series' second season, the Monkees removed the laugh track, pioneering a laugh track-free trend in sitcoms, influencing later series like Scrubs, Arrested Development, and Community. The Monkees, comprising four members, earned 450 per episode during their first season, a figure that increased to 750 in the second season. Despite recording royalties, their merchandise sales generated negligible income. In the late 1970s, Mickey Dolenz and Davy Jones pursued legal action against Columbia Pictures, settling for a meager 10000 The TV series secured sponsorship from Kellogg's Cereals and Yardley Cosmetics of London, alternating weekly. The Monkees created brief, humorous sponsor tags for Kellogg's Rice Krispies and Yardley Black Label Aftershave. When CBS picked up the series in 1969, the Monkees filmed commercials for their new sponsor, Cool Aid. Filming and recording sessions were typically exclusive, barring fans and outsiders. Among the few exceptions was Mickey Dolenz's sister, Coco Dolenz, who sang background vocals on some of their later records. During their TV series, the Monkees regularly faced off against fictional rival bands. Notable among these were the Jolly Green Giants, donning green outfits and green painted skin, the four Martians in gold tunics and red tights, the foreign agents sporting trench coats and sunglasses, and the Westminster Abbeys adopting medieval attire. Following the first season's conclusion, Davy Jones temporarily vanished from public view, sparking morbid health rumors. In reality, he strategically fasted for three weeks to fail a draft physical, successfully avoiding military service. As the TV series approached a potential third season, the Monkees proposed transforming it into an hour-long variety show to introduce new artists. The NBC presented an ultimatum, maintain the existing format or face cancellation. Opting for change, the Monkees stuck to their vision, resulting in the show's cancellation after two seasons. Peter Tork's guitar skills made a mark on the Monkees' self-titled first album, The Monkees. At the insistence of Michael Nesmith, who produced some tracks, he played on Papa Jean's Blues. However, the initial two albums showcased none of them playing instruments, with vocals being their sole contribution. This changed with their third album, Headquarters, where they played and sang on every track. The practice evolved across subsequent albums involving studio musicians on some and the band on others. They embraced this until their 1970 breakup, returning to it for their 1996 comeback LP, Justice. Of the quartet, only Peter Tork and Mickey Dolenz featured in all 58 TV series episodes. Davy Jones missed one due to his sister's wedding, while Michael Nesmith was absent for three episodes, including the birth of his son and a family trip. The TV series drew inspiration from the Beatles' film A Hard Day's Night. Interestingly, when they debuted on The Ed Sullivan Show, Davy Jones, later a monkey, was part of the stage acting troupe on the same show performing a scene from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist. Following their six-week acting course in 1966 with director James Frawley, the Monkees rehearsed and recorded as a band in the spring and early summer. They used rented instruments from screen gems, producing tracks like Michael Nesmith's The Girl I Knew Somewhere. About a hundred tracks were recorded during these sessions, cut short when Don Kirshner became the music supervisor. Had two members of the Prefab Four used their real names, the group would have been Davy, Peter, George, and Robert. Mickey Dolenz's full name is George Michael Dolenz, while Mike's full name is Robert Michael Nesmith. The misspelling of monkeys in the monkey's name alludes to the Beatles and their intentionally misspelled group name. This quirky connection adds a touch of humor to their formation. 
In summary, the Monkees' musical journey faced an early disruption with Kirshner's arrival. The group's real names would have formed a different lineup, and their names misspelling humorously linked them to the Beatles. Simple yet intriguing facets of their 1966 beginnings. To assemble the TV series cast, producers placed an ad in Variety, interviewing 437 hopefuls. Only Michael Nesmith was cast through the ad, Davy Jones had a pre-existing contract, Mickey Dolenz learned through his agent, and Peter Tork was referred by Stephen Stills. The chosen actors underwent a six-week improvisational acting course taught by director James Frawley on set. The iconic Monkeymobile, a modified 1966 Pontiac G2, featured a removed trunk, added third seat, and unique design elements. Three Monkeymobiles were created, each with distinct features such as a real or fake supercharger, different interiors, and convertible tops, all bearing varying sized logos on the doors. A widely believed misconception suggests that the Monkees rejected Sugar Sugar, leading to Don Kirshner's firing. However, Kirshner's dismissal actually resulted from his release of A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit You without the group's agreement. The confusion with Sugar, Sugar stems from a similar sounding Kirshner-related song. The firing occurred when DJs played She Hangs Out in the US, recorded without the other monkeys' knowledge, prompting Kirshner's termination. In summary, the Monkees' TV series casting involved an ad in variety, with Michael Nesmith being the only one selected through it. The Monkeymobile, a modified 1966 Pontiac G2, became an iconic symbol with three distinct versions. Don Kirshner's firing resulted from releasing a single without the group's consent, not from the alleged rejection of Sugar Sugar, 